In 1943, Philip Wrigley created an all-women's baseball league in the United States as a compromise because the men in the major leagues had to go fight in World War II, and now women's sports are a big part of our society today. Baseball, America's favorite pastime. During the 1930s, it acted as an escape route for the people of America to get away from the Great Depression and relax while watching or even playing baseball. The people of America got to leave their troubles behind for a moment to go see their favorite players like Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox. In fact, women also loved to play softball during the 1930s. Although they weren't allowed to play in the professional league with the men, they still created their own teams and played against one another. Women wanted to play baseball professionally. They didn't think it was fair that the men got paid to play professional baseball and the women couldn't even play. Then came World War II. The United States entered the war in 1941 after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Men everywhere in the United States were being drafted for World War II, including for Major League Baseball. Fan favorites such as Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams were drafted for the war and had to leave. Because of all these players leaving for the war, Major League Baseball saw an attendance drop of about 1 million people in 1942. Baseball took a big hit here because attendance had already been lower than ever because of the Great Depression, and after players had to leave for the war, attendance dropped even more. Due to this attendance drop, Major League Baseball was losing lots of money and something needed to be done about it. Philip K. Wrigley was the one to do something about it when he created an all-women's baseball league in 1943. The league started out as a women's softball league, but in 1945 it adopted overhand pitching and smaller ball sizes, along with the longer base paths over the years. The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League consisted of 15 teams. The Kenosha Comets, Racine Bells, Rockford Peaches, South Bend Blue Sox, Milwaukee Chicks, Minneapolis Milouettes, Fort Wayne Daisies, Grand Rapids Chicks, Muscogon Lassies, Peoria Red Wings, Chicago Collins, Springfield Sallies, Battle Creek Bells, and the Muscogon Bells. Although women got jobs like they wanted and were able to play in a professional baseball league, they still faced lots of sexism and discrimination. For starters, the team names. Most of these titles were very sexist and demeaning, such as the Chicks, the Sallies, and the Daisies. The women also had to wear skirts on the field, even though when they slid it would scrape their knees. Women who played in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League also had to attend beauty schools. The owners of the league wanted the women to act proper at all times and look beautiful, even though they were playing baseball. Meanwhile, in 1945, the men came back from the war, and men's baseball saw its highest attendance yet of 10,841,123 people. Although the men were back, and Major League Baseball was even more popular than it ever was, the women just kept playing baseball like they did before. In fact, the AAGPBL reached its high point in 1948 with an attendance of over 900,000 spectators. Although the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League had its high point in 1948, the league reached its end soon after in 1954, mostly due to lackadaisical promotion of the games. Even though the Professional Women's League ended in 1954, women still played baseball and softball soon after that. They didn't play in a professional league anymore, but they loved the game, so they played pickup games and even made their own small leagues. Because of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League and what it did for women's sports, women today have many opportunities to play many different sports. The highest ever attendance for a Division I NCAA women's softball game was 79,027 at an Alabama home game. Even laws were passed, such as Title IX, to give women equal scholarship opportunities. As you can see, the AAGPBL was an inspiration for women's athletes of many different kinds, including many other opportunities for women. It is one of the biggest reasons that women have the opportunities that they have today.